We know that no matter what's going on, how it's going to turn out. Now, when most people read that text, they go no further than verse 28. All things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. But actually, verse 29 is as important as verse 28. Verse 28 tells you what God will do. But verse 29 tells you the method. Somebody say verse 28 tells you what he will do. And verse 29 tells you how. Now observe these words in 29, and this gives you God's method. That which he foreknew, he also did predestinate. Somebody said with me, that which he foreknew, he also did predestinate. Here is one of the few times you encounter the word predestination. Now, most people believe that predestination means that God controls everything and prearranges all of our actions. They will say if you lose a loved one, God makes no mistakes, which is to imply God took your relative. That's their theology. But somebody say that is the wrong understanding of predestination. Because if man's destiny is prearranged, he is not free. And if he is not free, he should not be held responsible for his actions. Predestination really means that God uses his foreknowledge of the future to decide the outcome of future events before the future events happen. Come on, preachers, I want you to eat. Somebody say with me, God. Come on, say it again. God uses his foreknowledge to decide the outcome of your trial before you have the trial. Let me illustrate. Suppose a friend of yours overheard a conversation that three months from now, somebody's going to break in your home and steal your jewelry. You would use that knowledge, am I correct somebody, to get yourself ready. First of all, you'd waste your time going to the police. They would tell you, I can't arrest nobody until they commit a crime. So you would use that knowledge to, first of all, move your jewelry. You'd tell your children you're not going to be home on that day. You'd make sure the house is surrounded. Even though they may perform the act, you use the knowledge of the future to arrange the outcome. This is what God does. He uses his knowledge of what you're going to go through to work out your deliverance even before you go through it. Am I telling the truth? This is the only way he can say all things will turn out for your good is because he must know what all things are going to be. Am I right, somebody? Let me give an example. God did not cause Joseph's brothers to hate him, but he knew they would. Say it with me, somebody. God did not tell Joseph's brothers to put him in the pit, but he knew they would. So what God did, he let them put him in the pit. And just as they got in the pit, he let a caravan be coming right along, pull him out the pit, and put him in Potiphar's house. You've got to help me, saints. God did not tell that woman to rape Joseph. But he knew she would. Now let me go on record as saying the first sexual harassment on a job was not by a man harassing a woman. 
but a woman harassing a man. God didn't tell her to do that, but he knew he would. And he knew that Potiphar's house would lead to Joseph being put in prison, which would result in him becoming the first Jewish governor of Egypt. Please observe with me. God allowed the devil to put him in a pit. God allowed the devil to chase him at Potiphar's house. God allowed the devil to put him in jail. And all God did was manipulate the timeline. The devil may do a whole lot of stuff, but he got to get God's permission as to when he's going to do it. And we hear Joseph saying to his family, you intended evil, but God manipulated it. Help me, Holy Ghost. Let's go a little further. God did not tell Pharaoh to murder those babies, but he knew he would. So just as he made the decision to murder the babies, God let Pharaoh's daughter feel dirty who was also barren. And then he allowed the mother to put the belly baby in the water, let a little breeze hit it. Y'all don't hear me. Now, let me give you a glimpse, and I'm too unwise to talk about the majesty of God, but you got to, you got to see his strategy. God knew a hundred years before Israel knew it that they would need a deliverer. Wait a minute. God knew in a hundred years, they would need a deliverer who was a Jew with a PhD in Egyptian law with wilderness experience. What you Woo! Am I telling the truth? Yes, sir. And God set a hundred years. God started answering their prayer a hundred years before they prayed it. And by the time Israel got ready to pray, their deliverer was already made. Am I telling the truth? God knew he didn't do it. That the early church would suffer for 200 years under the Roman government. So God fixed it so that after 200 years, Constantine yes. would be their first Christian governor and he would eliminate, I need help up here. He would eliminate the persecution of the church. I don't have time to say what I want to say, but God knew that once the Christian church got in power, they would become as corrupt as their predecessors. And so around the 15th century, God planted a stubborn man. At a later date, I'm going to talk about how God uses stubborn people. God planted a stubborn man named Martin Luther who planted that thesis yes, he did. and started the Protestant church. Yes. That's where we go. God knew that an insane man named Adolf Hitler would get in power in 1932 with some notion that if he killed the Jews and then the blacks, he would purify the race. Am I correct, somebody? God started working on that deliverance 114 years before Hitler was born. God started it in 1776 when he allowed a nation to be born that believed in freedom, liberty, and justice for all and free enterprise. And he allowed that nation to become so big and so powerful 
until the time that Hitler got to his peak of power, the United States of America came along and crushed him. God knew. Look at your neighbor and say, God didn't do it, but he knew it. God knew that after the Emancipation Proclamation, that Afro-America would still not be free. God knew that a hundred years of slavery would turn into a hundred years of segregation. 